Hey everybody, it's Allie, and welcome to our YNR chat for Sunday, May 4th, 2014. I had to laugh this week that Tyler decided to try to beat Victor to the punch and have his sister draw up his own prenuptial agreement for his marriage to the rich heiress. It was hilarious. He's sitting at the coffee house with Abby and Leslie and he gives the, a copy of the prenup to Abby. She's of course offended thinking, you know, why would he go ahead and have, you know, that drawn up without me? But she begins to read the prenup and it was so much more like a love letter. <laughs> it was nothing like a legal document. It really made me laugh because I'm 100% sure that the phrase, not one penny, <laughs> is not in anyone else's <laughs> legal prenuptial agreement. <laughs> it was like just one more sort of forced romantic moment between it for a couple that I'm just not feeling. But I, I, I oddly this week, I'm actually thinking that there might be some light at the end of that tunnel because after their, their um, just romantic prenuptial agreement, Abby and Tyler rush off to the local dingy, I suppose Genoa City Motel, <laughs> where they have a quickie, but little do they know who their next door neighbor is. Tyler steps out into the hall and he finally runs into Mariah, comes face to face to her, with her, and we as the audience finally see who Mariah actually is. And it's Cassie. <laughs> it's Cassie, Mariah, Cassia. <laughs> Oh my. I mean, I, I think we kind of all by last week had started to figure out that she was Mariah. I'm going to have to switch my talking over now to try to call her Mariah instead of Cassie because it's been so long. In reality, I feel mad at myself that I didn't figure it out before that she was going to end up being Mariah. Duh. It all makes complete sense to me now, of course, in hindsight. But they have a little confrontation, Tyler and Mariah, and it's weird. She made some kind of implication about Tyler's past. I don't know what it was, but it almost, something in her words, to me, almost made it sound like maybe Tyler used to be a bad guy, or we all know that Mariah is the queen of scams. She had gotten herself into whatever she did in Portland, but... For the first time, it almost seemed like maybe sh she was implying that Tyler used to be involved in some of that, and maybe he got tired of it and they broke up. But I always thought that the that she broke up with him and broke his heart. So I don't know exactly <laughs> what the nature of their relationship is, but I kind of like thinking of them together. Um, there's a moment where she's trying to convince him to dump the heiress and come back to her as she has been for weeks and she kisses him. We see it's so weird because she's always going to be Cassie in my mind in some in some small ways. So I'm still seeing this little girl kissing this big hunky black man. <laughs> I kind of liked it, to be honest with you. I like Mariah and Tyler better than I like Abby and Tyler together. What do you guys think about it? Do you think this is a worthy triangle? Do you like seeing them two together? You're going to have to let me know this week where you stand on this. I'm happy because I think it adds a little bit of spice into a storyline that I have not been thrilled about, as everyone knows. I think Mariah is spicy. I'm glad that YNR brought her back in one form or another. I'm glad that she's back. Um, she's devious 
as uh, she's leaving Abby and I guess Abby had gone off to do something or other I can't remember what uh, but she and Tyler alone in, in their hotel room together and Mariah strategically drops her bracelet on the floor when Tyler has his back turned and it's a bracelet that even has a little letter M on it so it's definitely obviously hers she drops it on the floor as soon as Abby, Abby gets back of course she finds it and Tyler is forced to explain he's actually at a point where he could have continued to lie Abby said oh the maid must have dropped this but he didn't he wanted to be honest with Abby I do think he is trying to move on from whatever maybe this dark past was I think he's trying to move on and be honest so he does tell Abby that Mariah was there in their room and then later now that the truth is out about who she actually is Abby and Mariah run into each other in the hall. Abby's finally able to confront her about locking her in that apartment they were looking at overnight and canceling the deal on the house they were going to buy together and just overall sort of tormenting uh, Abby. And she finally does get a chance to rip Mariah a new one. But frankly, I think Mariah can easily deal with Abby. I kind of want Mariah to beat down on Abby. <laughs> I think Mariah is a scrapper. I think if she, I think she can easily take down Abby if she can survive a deal gone wrong with Abby's father. Poor Mariah has to now deal with the wrath of Victor after everything exploded last week. The truth came out that Victor was the one who hired her to haunt Sharon. And now Victor's going to get up in her face and try to understand or intimidate her or get her out of town uh, for, for what she did. She took Victor's money without a job well done and he's not happy about it. So, of course, he's going to get up in her face. I kind of like how Mariah handles him. I think Victor, I wonder if he knows deep down that what he did was wrong. At this point, maybe he's just trying so hard to justify his actions. Victor is still in the mindset that if he can just find out what Sharon's deep, dark secret is, then it's going to justify everything that he did. That if he can just find out why Sharon is this horrible person that shouldn't be with his son, then it will cancel out his own sin. I don't know if he's going to be so lucky. I think everybody is, is, is increasingly becoming furious with him for that. I don't think there's anybody left in his life that doesn't hate him. And But he's just thinking, maybe if I can create a distraction, everybody will forget what I did. Sharon wants to know what the deep secret is, too. I mean, it's somehow connected to Phyllis. It is the only thing that Victor was really able to a, ever able to find out uh, but she wants to know and Sharon even tells Nick oh I know I had a secret I know I was covering something up but I'm just not sure what it is and just watching Sharon try to find out what it was she did all all week this this week made me think you know when this all comes out Sharon is going to be sh just as shocked as everyone else and I think it's going to be viewed like a different version of herself did this and it's going to help everyone forgive her because Nick and Sharon are building this really close relationship now and when the truth does come out about what she did with the paternity there how else could he forgive her except to understand that she did it when she was a different version of herself so Sharon doesn't know any of this. She goes to Cassie, and I just have to say, I loved the moment where Sharon comes face to face with Cassie. I sh should say Mariah again. Um, and it's this private moment between the two women, and it was very sobering almost to see them coming face to face now that the 
the truth is out. There's no more haunting. There's no more lies. It's just Sharon looking at this woman who is a projection of what her daughter would have looked like, what, 10 years into the future? And it's it's amazing to her. I, I'm sure it's extremely awkward for Mariah, but Mariah is still very concerned that she's going to go to jail over this. And she thinks immediately that Sharon's there to rip her a new one, tell her she's going to go to jail. But Sharon was very, very compassionate toward her, even, you know, offers to help her little fallen angel. Sharon still sees this as an opportunity to connect in with her daughter somehow. And I just love it. I love it. I think that these two women could become friends. Mariah's never actually going to be Sharon's daughter, but I think that they could become friends, and I'm really excited. I hope they keep her around for a while. I, I love seeing her interact with Nick now. I'm just totally pro Cameron Grimes being back on YNR. I love it so much. Um, just a total side note, too. I have to say, Sharon's fashion was on point this week. Did you guys notice she's she's always gorgeous, but this week the clothes, I'm feeling it. She's just very flowy. Uh, it's she's very like it's cas casual but dressy hair and always great jewelry. She just looked good this week. <laughs> Didn't want to fail to mention that. Of course. <laughs> now, Nick is just angry. He's on the angry end of everything at his father primarily. So Nick, while well, Sharon is off uh, talking to Mariah, Nick goes to Nikki and tells her everything that Victor did. It was only a matter of time. Of course, as soon as Nikki learns the truth about how far Victor would actually go, the depths to which he would sink to keep him, keep Nick and Sharon apart. She's appalled, of course. And so she is building to a boil as Nick is telling her everything Victor did. And Victor comes <laughs> strolling into the ranch main room reading the mail. Like he's got the mail in his hand. He's kind of like flipping through it. <laughs> And it's just like, I had a feel that that part, it was just, I had a feeling like maybe Victor's out in the driveway, he realizes Nick's car's there, he knows that Nikki's going to be so mad, so he grabs a lot of mail to make it look like he's just casually reading, <laughs> like it's no big deal. I mean, because the whole time they he comes in, they confront him, she, Nikki's like, is this true what you've done? And he's just like, yeah, it is, but you know, we got this uh, invitation to the wedding, do you want to go to that? I mean, he totally played it off like it was nothing. Oh my goodness. Um, Nick is, uh, he blows up. He completely disowns Victor for, again, like the hundredth time. But he tells him, you know, I have no father. <laughs> and he dramatically leaves the room. And Victor, he just still, he doesn't take it seriously. He thinks this is all going to blow over. He's playing the long game. Everybody's going to be mad at Sharon eventually, not him. So the second Nick marches out, Victor's like, hey, Nikki, want to go riding or something? You know, want to just go grab one of the horses and ride? Like, it's, it's nothing. And I think that's part of who Victor is. If he can control the situation and control the emotion in the room, he can control the outcome. He makes it seem like it's no big deal. And so therefore, everybody else is just supposed to accept that it's no big deal. But Nikki is furious. She erupts at him. She is disgusted by him for all of the times, all of the times he's betrayed her, for all of the bad things that he's done. This is the one thing where it's like now she's looking at him thinking, I don't want to forgive you. I'm actually sickened by you right now. I mean, she tells him basically what a cruel beast he is and then accuses him of being no better than Ian Ward. No better than Ian Ward. She said it twice. <laughs> and he was so offended. What, how could you say I'm no better than Ian Ward? I want you to take that back. He doesn't get to be offended in this situation. At least let Nikki have her feelings. I mean, he he's so self-centered. It's just... Uh, 
Nikki is not going to take it back. I mean, I don't know if she'll take him back eventually. May probably. Probably. <laughs> but for now, she just says, you know, what you've done is unforgivable. And I just may run away with Moraka <laughs> just to prove it to you. So there's a scene after Nikki leaves Victor. She goes and takes up a room at the club and she's sitting down uh, having breakfast. And Moraka comes in. He play He's playing the part of this guy. I don't know if he was an accountant or something, but he comes in and he's just playing up like he's always had this crush on Nikki. Oh, Nikki, you know, if you ever just please run away with me to the islands. It was adorable. I'm not like even some huge Moraka fan. I haven't even honestly seen him in I don't know how long, but it was so cute. <laughs> it was just such a nice little, I don't know, light moment after so much heaviness. Um, the other thing I was thinking is that <laughs> Moraka basically looks like how Fen is going to look in 30 years. I just kept looking at him thinking, it's Fen. It's like Fen in 30 years. What the heck? <laughs> we should not let Fen have... I, li I just, I like that concept. We should, like, bring him on and let's have somebody having this huge crush on Nikki and just let it lightly be a, a thorn under, you know, under Victor's paw. I just, I, I does, everything doesn't always have to be hugely dramatic. Something like a crush is cute to me and would be entertaining to me. I just thought it was a really sweet scene. Um, Nikki comes back to the ranch to pack a bag. Victor's still fuming, looking out the window as he does, gazes onto his property and all of the, all that he owns. And he says to Nikki, you know, you're leaving me? You're leaving this house? I built this house for you after Sharon burned it down. Which is true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> she leaves anyway. Um, and you know, I guess probably one of the most unexpected parts of the week uh, was that she, Victor's at the house alone and Sharon ends up coming by to see him and asking Victor to help her uncover the secret that she was keeping. She is as involved in no, wanting to know as everyone else. So I, it was really, I thought that was an interesting scene because, she, you know, Victor has this seething hatred of Sharon, but she actually took a moment to remind him of the relationship that they used to have. The relationship that Victor and Sharon had prior to their marriage was always supportive and wonderful, and I always appreciated it. Victor was always on Sharon's side, even when Nikki wasn't, even when Nick wasn't. And I do miss that. Um, it was good to see her reminding him of how when her mother had, you know, fallen out of her wheelchair or there was some kind of uh, operation that her mother needed, Victor was there. He paid for her to have an, a, a very expensive operation. He's always been there to support her. And now she wants, she's saying, I want to repay you by figuring out what it is that I did. And Phyllis may be the only one who knows the secret, but Sharon now wants to know it just as much as everyone else. I love that the groundwork for Ian's death is already being laid. He is a walking dead man. Someone is going to kill him, and Dylan is already the prime suspect. He's not even dead, and Dylan is the prime suspect. <laughs> Dylan is really being made to look this week like he is a bomb getting ready to go off. He could kill Ian at any moment. Ian comes back to his hotel room, and Dylan's in there in the Dark, and it's just every time you turn around, you can just see that Dylan's kind of gritting his teeth and just wanting Ian out of his life. I, I like Ian. I so want him to stay around, I except I know he's going to die. Everybody's going to be a suspect. I mean, Avery and Summer are both really nasty toward him every time they have a, a confrontation. But Paul is really suspicious of Dylan and uh, already kind of believes that he's capable. So we all know Ian's going to die and Dylan's going to be the first suspect, but it's going to end up 
you know, <laughs> being someone that he had an affiliation with for his uh, business or shoot, it could even be Willa. But I mean, the writing is on the wall. He's a dead man walking. <laughs> um, the other twist of the week that I really appreciated was Cassie. After having uh, the uh, Victor come to see her, I believe it was, she gets on the phone with some mystery person and is asking for help. And as soon as uh, she gets the help, she goes to her hotel room, opens up the door, and it's revealed that who she was talking to was Ian. So Ian's like this mystery man. He comes to Cassie's rescue. He's like our favorite resident evil. <laughs> Ian is somehow connected to Cassie. We don't exactly know how. The only, the thing I picked up on between that scene, I, I gotta quit calling her Cassie, Mariah, Mariah. The thing, I, it's gonna take me a couple weeks, but I'll get there. The thing that uh, I picked up most on that scene is that Ian said something to Mariah about her mother. Some kind of comment about, look at you, getting along just fine without your mother. I want to know why she does look as much like Cassie as she does. I want to know if there's any chance she is actually related to Sharon. I'm wondering, uh, I, I hope this isn't the case, but I'm wondering if this could possibly be opening up the door for Sharon to have a double two. Like, she's got a doppelganger. I mean, you know, soaps love it. Let's see, Catherine's had one, Lauren's had one. That's just what I can think about off the top of my head. Who else has had a doppelganger? That'd be a good question for you guys to leave me. Who else has had a, a double, a twin in Genoa City in recent years? I know there have been many, but um, I'm just wondering if there's any chance Sharon has a twin sister who gave birth to this Mariah. I just, I couldn't help but notice that there was that mention of her mother, and I think that that's somehow going to come into play. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. So you guys tell me what you think the connection between Ian and Mariah is, and if you have any predictions on that. The only other thing I wanted to mention in this sort of realm is that Avery is working on her cooking show, and she's, it's, something's going on. Someone is, like, stalking her. She gets this bouquet of flowers that are from some mystery person. There's no card and nobody knows anything about where they would have come from and it's making Dylan really, really paranoid that it's Ian. And it may be. It seems like every time Avery's talking about her cooking show, Ian is off in the corner just like twiddling his fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna do something evil. So, like, send her flowers. But it is sort of the, um, the type of thing he would probably do. It's kind of passive aggressive uh, if he ever got found out for it it's what it's just flowers so it could certainly be uh, Ian but there's also a part of me that's thinking it's probably not I wonder if Avery has uh, some kind of online stalker and could it have any, I mean, because they're constantly talking about these comments that she's getting on her cooking show. They're in the forums and on the blogs and all that. And then we know there's that sort of sexy video of her out there. I, I can't help thinking that's not, I mean, that's got to come into play at some point. So could it be an online stalker or, I don't know, could it be that really nice seeming yet creepy camera guy? Jack is falling head over heels in love with Kelly, and the feelings are actually being returned. The only kind of problem, I think, in her mind is Phyllis. It's something that has to be addressed, and I'm glad that YNR is addressing it. They're not just discounting Jack and Phillips, Phyllis's relationship. They've been uh, connecting in with it ever since Phyllis's coma, even though they killed off a really huge character or put her in a coma. I mean, at least they've brought it to the main stage uh, very regularly. And I was a big fan of Jack and Phyllis, and so I do appreciate that. The, the thing, though, that I'm feeling now is, you know, 
I believe that Phyllis loved Jack, but there was kind of always that sense, and maybe you'll agree or maybe you won't, that he loved her more than she loved him. Especially at the end, it seemed like she she just never really could get over Nick. She left Jack for Nick in the first place, and then she, after the relationship with Nick started falling apart, I, I, I just think Jack was almost kind of her backup guy. And so it is nice to see Jack with somebody who really loves him for him. And he is very much obviously falling in love with Kelly, even though he does still love Phyllis. And they had a very frank conversation about her. And I loved hearing Jack be open about it, uh, getting it off his chest and, you know, saying Phyllis probably would have hated you. She would have ripped her head off, especially going after me. I mean, this is who she was. And I just, I thought it was good. And I, I'm glad that they got it out there and it's, you know, it's at least being acknowledged. Um, they are, Jack, Jack is very happy. He couldn't wait to tell Kelly that he had Billy's blessing on their relationship. So he's very excited to move forward. Um, they are definitely dating. This week they went to go see an Italian movie and then they took a stroll in the park afterwards and they end up embracing and kissing in the park amongst all of the, the spring blossoms which really kind of represent their blossoming love and then next week I think we're going to start to get a taste of their <laughs> blossoming sexual <laughs> desires for each other. Every time Kelly runs into Stitch, she makes these vague remarks about this horrible thing that he's done, something in his past that he that she she told his wife about and can't forgive him for and they're constantly talking around it and telling us as the viewer nothing and I am getting tired of it whatever Stitch did apparently it happened before he married his first wife I'm assuming I don't I don't even know I honestly don't even know I keep going back to thinking that maybe he has some kind of other identity because I remember when she first came to town she said something like oh they're calling you Dr. Rayburn now so I don't know I, it's it's irritating to me I'm completely on board for Billy finding out what the heck it is because Billy overhears this another talk between uh, Ke Kelly and Stitch uh, about saying something about this unforgivable thing that he has to live with and so Billy takes that opportunity to put the press on Stitch and ask him personally what it is. Uh, of course Stitch doesn't tell and then he runs to Kelly and says look are you gonna tell people or not? You know stop hanging this over my head. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> um, and she she agrees she's not going to tell anyone, so Billy's probably going to have to find out what it is without Kelly's help. Who knew maybe you could do an internet search and find out some more information? Makes me want to start investigating this. Like, come on, YNR, just tell us what it is. Whatever it is, just tell us what it is. I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> I want to know if it's really as bad as all that. Ugh, meanwhile... Victoria is hovering over her home pregnancy test. She takes it. It's positive. It's so ironic to me that Victoria is pregnant now. Why? I mean, now. Do you remember how hard she and Billy tried to have children? Not even just this last go around, but before that, Victoria has had trouble conceiving and carrying to term for so many years, I mean, does she only have one biological child? I think, right? Victoria only has one biological child. She's, and I think she's miscarried a couple of times. So this has been something that's really, really difficult for her. And now she's pregnant and it seemed so easy. Now she's pregnant. She doesn't even know who the father is. Uh, I, I, maybe it's Stitch. Maybe it's Billy. Maybe Billy was the problem all along. Maybe he, I don't know, maybe Stitch has fresher sperm. <laughs> oh, maybe we should hook him up with Chloe. Be, he'd be a good sperm donor. We'll talk about that later. But Victoria goes to the doctor, gets her pregnancy confirmed. And by the way, did you guys notice, did you recognize that the doctor was played by Helen Slater? I love her. She's so cool and cute and I guess maybe people remember her most from 
uh, Supergirl. I think she had a, a I want to say it was a TV series, the Supergirl TV series. Maybe you guys remember that. I think of her from the legend of Billie Jean. <laughs> Come on, Billie Jean. I know she's probably tired of hearing all that, but I, I thought it was just nice to see her face. She's so just cool. I like her delivery. I like her whole vibe. She's maybe a little bit Southern. We need to keep her. Can we cast her? Keep her as Genoa City's resident doctor. I mean, is this the first time she's ever been on? So what part of me says, has she been on before? I don't know, but let's bring her on more. Um, I'm wondering if Christine is going to be paying a visit to her too, because after having talked to Lauren and Michael about Lauren's false pregnancy, Chris has started to realize that maybe she wants to have a child now. I'm shocked. I mean, I really wasn't expecting that because I mean, knowing for Christine for as many years as we have, she's really never been that you know, never been as interested in having children. And I really did appreciate the scene where they focused in on her and Paul uh, deciding whether or not they want to have a kid. And Chris kind of saying, you know, I realize now that there's something that's missing in my life. And it's all well and good to have a career. And I love my career. But I put having a family into the back of my mind because I thought I wouldn't be good at it. I thought I'd have the type of relationship with my daughter or son that I had with my mother. And it was it was really just nice to focus in on her and understand where she was coming from and to feel where she is now. It's, it's really the most connected that I have felt to Chris in really a while. Uh, Chloe has this, well, first of all, she has this awkward lunch with Lauren, okay? And Lauren's just trying to check in with her. Lauren makes the mistake of suggesting that maybe Chloe needs to think about moving on with her life, maybe meeting someone new, maybe having children, and it was the wrong thing to say. Chloe jumps all over Lauren. How could you even suggest that? I can't replace my daughter. But then, ding, 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 Maybe I can. Oh man, she is off the rails right now. Chloe uh, runs to Billy with this harebrained idea that she and Billy should have another baby, that they should recreate Delia, that somehow their genetics were combined to create the most perfect child on earth. And now that she's gone, it, they have to do it again. They have to replace her. Oh my gosh. It was so painful. It Like watching Chloe's wheels turn in almost this Frankenstein way. I'm going to recreate my child. It was so hard to watch. Delia was a perfect combination of both of our qualities, the best parts of us. And she's giving this plea to Billy and the look in his eyes. He's still going through this loss too. And to see Chloe just begging him, we should have another child, kind of tugging on his tie almost, desperately asking him to have a baby with her. I. I'm watching Billy's reaction and there was this part of me where I thought, are they actually going to do this? Is there maybe a part of Billy, a small tiny part that wants it too or is intrigued by this idea? And I thought, maybe, <laughs> until Chloe said, look, I don't want your love, I want your sperm. That is a quote. I don't want your love, I want your sperm. <sighs> that line <laughs> dropped down into the middle of the room like a poo in a punch bowl. It was so bad. <laughs> I was totally into the moment and until that point. Like I was like, oh, this is so bad, it's good. And then I don't want your love, I want your sperm happened. And I thought, oh Lord, no, it's over. I mean, I was feeling like, why, why didn't Chloe, why didn't they do a screen test between Chloe and Billy, like Chloe and new Billy, quote unquote, uh, before? Because I am totally, I could, I could see 
David Tom as Billy with Elizabeth Hendrickson as Chloe. Like, those, that worked. Like, that scene sucked me in. Maybe it was in part because of what the crazy thing that was coming out of her mouth, but I also felt a chemistry there between those two. And I kind of hate that I realized that just when she's leaving. I kind of hate that things with Chloe are getting super interesting just as I know she's leaving. Um, it's creepy, but good. Like, it's creepy in a good way. I can't believe it's happening, and I'm completely compelled by it, and that's why I watch. <laughs> it's not boring. Chloe's behavior is shocking, and I'm kind of loving it. Chloe has this working lunch with Chelsea and announces that she's having a baby. Chelsea's like, oh, you and Kevin, you know, you're pregnant? Oh, no, no. I just, you know, I'm planning on having a baby. I'm planning on getting a donor. Chloe thinks that this is the greatest idea she's ever had. Having a baby is going to allow her to focus all of her energy on the baby instead of on Connor or Chelsea or anybody else. This is her last hope. She hasn't told her doctor about it because Chelsea's like, have you talked to your therapist about this? I mean, <laughs> maybe that's not totally healthy. I mean, the look in Chelsea's eyes is like, oh, my poor friend, my poor sick sick friend. Chloe's going on about how, oh, it's already in motion. I already found the donor. Well, I doubt she's went to a sperm bank. So, I mean, the girl is looking for something specific. She's looking for a Delia replacement. So, either she's gonna somehow Ashley, Ashley slash Victor spiel, like in the way that Ashley stole Victor's sperm to make Abby, maybe Chloe's gonna steal <laughs> Billy's sperm to make a new child, or somebody's gonna stop her, or I don't know what she's gonna do. Maybe ugh, drug Billy? Devon is pretty much realizing that he is falling in love with Hillary just as he's standing outside of her hotel room door, hearing her moaning and groaning <laughs> through the oak door. I mean, she's whoo, she's just, uh, uh, you know, like really, really whooping it up. I mean, the same thing happened to her. He's standing there like feeling sad about it. Oh no, I missed my chance with Hillary. But the same thing happened to her when she found Devon doing Esmeralda in the, the steam room in the sauna. I mean, what's the problem with Esmeralda, Devon? Because frankly, as, as Devon has started to find Esmeralda more hollow, I've started finding her more interesting. I kind of like her. Let's bring on some more Esmeralda. Am I the only one? I'm kind of feeling her. She's nasty and I just like it or she's or just she's a diva and I like it <laughs> um oh Neil and Hillary oh they do make me cringe but it's it's just not right and I'm trying to add it's 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 not right and not even you know it's not even good in a forbidden way I think what my problem is with Neil and Hillary is that when Hillary came onto the scene as Ann Turner or whatever, I was sure that she was going to end up being Neil's daughter. And in my head, I think I never let go of that conception. I think I'm constantly thinking of Hillary as a daughterly figure to Neil and Neil being a fatherly, fatherly figure to her and now seeing them kissing on each other and him calling her baby, it's just, whoa, it's not, I, I can't connect in with it. It just feels wrong. I mean, what if Neil does still turn out to be her father? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be too, too hard on it because I think I'm kind of guessing that most people aren't feeling it just from the very little sort of like browsing I do about YNR in a week. I think I've seen more negative comments than positive. So I will say I do like seeing Neil happy. Um, but I also still think that Hillary is a vixen and I think there's a good chance that she might be still working an angle under the sheets. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're going at it. They're finding that it's not just a one-time thing. They're really into each other. They have a conversation about how they're going to keep their involvement a secret. And I had to really, really laugh. And I was really, really amused by Neil 
sprinting downstairs, practically walking on air, comes down to the main dining room of the athletic club, sees Devon, and he's all, my man, and singing, and practically bouncing off the walls. <laughs> comes downstairs and they try to play it cool because they've got this secret involvement and they don't want Devon to know about it and uh, Hillary says something like so Neil are you here for dinner and Neil says no I just came from one hell of a workout best one ever he might as well just be saying I just had sex and it felt so good I mean he is just just a bubble over. I, I will also say I do appreciate this storyline in the sense that it puts Neil front and center in a way that I haven't paid as much attention to him in the past. Like, he's had other romances. He's had a lot of other stuff. And sometimes, even though I love Neil, I think he's a great per he's got a great little personality and I think he's a cool guy. Um, I'm, I just, a lot of times his storylines kind of fall flat. And even as, even though I don't love him and Hillary together, it is at least kind of making me refocus on Neil. I like seeing him happy. I like seeing him dancing around and being c -c -c crazy. I mean, shoot, apparently Leslie wasn't as good in bed because I don't ever remember seeing Neil walking around on sunshine after he slept with Leslie, right? <laughs> Hillary must be real good. She's real good for the Neil Meister. <laughs> Uh, and they're going to get caught, and it's going to be scandalous. Devon is going to be crushed. But the real thing to look out for is, whoo -hoo, I want to see Lily's face when she finds out that her dad is sleeping with her enemy. Okay, guys, that does it for me. I hope you guys had a good week and that you love the show. Please feel free to leave me your comments. I love reading. I always read and I, I totally appreciate all of the feedback. It helps get me pumped for YNR hearing what you guys have to say. So everybody, gosh, love ya. Have a good week. Bye.